So then I request every one of you to kindly find your sitting places. Um, it's a great, great honor and pleasure for me to address you this morning on a very interesting aspect of our spiritual life. Uh, I think you all know that uh, when we chant the holy name, it is important to chant with the sense of a sambanda or relationship. Otherwise, our chanting will remain dry. It will feel a little bit like moving through desert without water. If a sadaka moves forward in his sadhana, uh, uh, of chanting the holy name, he uh, or she absolutely requires the feeling that they are chanting in Krishna's presence. Mm. So I will talk about an ancient traditional method, how the Vaishnavas in our tradition have been able to maintain the sambanda throughout the 24 hours of the day, so that whenever they chanted uh, the holy name, either in Japa or in Kirtan, they did feel not alone, but they felt the presence of Radha and Krishna. This uh, ancient process is uh, around the third item of devotional service, uh, that is Smaranam. So let me just uh, chant some invocatory prayers, and then we will uh, move into this wonderful subject matter. Vishnupadaya Vishnu Prashtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Swami Itina Namaste Zaraswate Deve Gauravani Nadine Nirvashesha Shunyavari Askatyare Satadine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Ti Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Shri Gobhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, um, uh, he brought with him a process how conditioned souls, you know, jiva souls, could uh, be uh, in yoga, in connection uh, with uh, the Lord. As you well know, the process consi consisted of chanting the holy name, but there was something else. And this uh, needs to be understood uh, for those who practice in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
For those who came in contact with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they only heard of one process. Um, that is uh, the singing of the holy name. Lord Chaitanya, wherever he was, engaged in uh, kirtan. And in fact, his mouth uh, uh, was always filled with the names of Lord Hari. Uh, uh, we hear from Chaitanya Charitamrita when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for instance, came to the Haridev Mandir. Um, he started to dance uh, and sing the holy name and people from the surrounding village of Govardhan came and heard about this amazing sannyasi and saw him chanting and dancing and uh, Krishna does, uh, Kaviraj says, they were Vishmita, Vishmita means simply surprised because they had never seen such singing and dancing before. But they did not know uh, what else Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did. They did not see it, they did not hear it. Only those who were close to him and who were his devotees um, could uh, see that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu practiced throughout the day and the night uh, the remembrance or smaran of the beautiful pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Mm -hmm. This combination, chanting the holy name and uh, remembering again and again the pastimes, the forms, mm, the names, mm, the qualities of uh, the divine couple was the second more hidden process of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, mm, mm, the great, great, our great, great uh, grand spiritual master, uh, he once spoke about this second more hidden uh, side of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's um, teachings. He said, uh, it is very natural that Krishna is always together with his Swarup Shakti, Shimati Radharani. Krishna only becomes Krishna in the association of Radha. I think this is very simple to, for us to understand. Uh, only with Radha, uh, Krishna feels complete. Uh, they are sometimes uh, described as the sun always comes with the sun rays, otherwise the sun is not complete or the fire comes always together with the light and the heat, otherwise it is not fire. Or this fragrant musk substance um, always comes together with the substance and then the fragrance, the smell. In much the same way, Krishna always is together with Radha. Uh, in the same analogous way, as Krishna always is together with his Swarup Shakti, the, uh, the ho holy name, which is uh, fully Krishna, is a uh, must be together with uh, Kata, or uh, talking about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Otherwise, it is incomplete. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had spoken about this incompleteness of the sadhana. He had said uh, that if you chant the holy name without remembering Krishna, your chanting is only a shadow, a chaya. It is not the substance. And as we all know, 
uh, uh, um, shadow can never satisfy us completely. If there's a shadow of an apple, um, uh, let us say you walk through the Holy Name Monastery and you pass an apple tree and uh, you see the shadow of the apple reflected on the ground. It is reminding you of an apple, uh, maybe, but you can't taste it, you can't eat it. Uh, eat it. In the same way, when you chant the holy name, then of Krishna, you know, yes, I'm not chanting the name of, um, let us say, Shiva or, or Brahma, uh, but uh, um, as long as you don't remember Krishna's form, how he walks and how, how he talks. As long as you do not remember how Krishna thinks, um, what are his qualities, and if you do not remember what are Krishna's pastimes, then it is not, will not work. So therefore, uh, the Acharyas, uh, of the past, all this talk about the need uh, to chant Krishna and remember Krishna's pastimes. And, and the best pastimes where Krishna is fully Krishna are those pastimes which Krishna performs in Vrindavan. It's very important. Otherwise, again, I want to say you're chanting uh, tends to be mm, mechanical. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard about, mm, uh, went one day to his spiritual master, mm, uh, he received from him the essence of all the instructions of the Bhagavatam. And that is Yatanuraga Evanama Kirtya. That uh, when a devotee who's on this path chants the holy name with anuraga, with great devotional attachment, mm, he will sometimes uh, uh, cry tears, he will sometimes laugh, he will sometimes uh, uh, sit sad in the corner, and at other times he will dance. This is, why is this so? Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur explains, for such a devotee who chants the name of his beloved Lord, this is not a dry process. No, he will uh, uh, sometimes laugh because he sees Krishna coming in the evening to the house of Shimati Radharani in, in Yavat, but um, uh, and, and, and making the sound of a cuckoo while he stands in the courtyard to attract the attention of Radharani. But as he makes cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo to wake up Radharani, her mother-in-law Jatila is woken up and she shouts into the darkness from her room, is there someone, is there someone? And Krishna has to hide behind the tree. So the devotee who chants uh, the holy name thinks of Krishna and he thinks of this particular pastime. He thinks about the voice of Krishna, how it is like a cuckoo, um, and he so soft and so deep and so melodious. <laughs> and uh, he also uh, remembers, oh, Krishna, is, uh, he, is the, he is the Lord of all, but he is hiding behind a tree. And he starts to laugh uncontrollably. Because, see, for him, chanting is not just uh, chanting the names of Krishna, but it is uh, remembering also Krishna, uh, his form, 
his uh, qualities and his pastimes like this one. There's a great need for devotees who want to stay enlivened in the process of chanting to carefully, uh, uh, according to the teachings of uh, the founder Acharya of their line, uh, that is Srila Prabhupada, to move into this uh, realm of Smaranam. How do we remember Krishna? Well, first of all, we need to have a source from which we hear about Krishna. And uh, the uh, proof or the scripture which tells us about uh, Krishna in perfection is the Srimad Bhagavatam. Because it is there where the, the Siddha, Vaishnava, Shukadev Goswami um, has uh, compiled the various pastimes of Krishna. So throughout, uh, we hear in Shukadev Goswami's realized descriptions um, about uh, uh, how Krishna looks. After all, we know that Shukadev uh, Goswami, who is sometimes compared with a parrot, was a parrot, a very specific, specific parrot in Radha and Krishna's pastimes. And before Krishna left this planet, he told uh, Shukadev Goswami, I want you to stay in this world. And I want you to stay so that you can narrate uh, my pastimes uh, 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 together with Shimati Radhika in, uh, uh, for the Vaishnavas in this world who want to um, uh, make contact with, with me. So it is ultimately Shukadev Goswami um, who has uh, given us the outline of Krishna's pastimes and who has described so much about his past, uh, pastimes, uh, which uh, concentrates both on Krishna's essential, uh, uh, let us say Krishna's uh, nature. It is uh, his, uh, who, who is Krishna? It means Krishna Tattva. Um, uh, how he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but it also, uh, uh, Sukadev description also uh, concentrates on what is called the rasa, the relish or the taste uh, which comes when you are uh, in a relationship uh, with Krishna. Only when you know tattva and rasa, these two elements uh, need to come together if you want to know about Krishna completely. When you ignore mm, tattva, then the other half, uh, rasa, will not give you a complete picture of Krishna. Uh, or if you ignore rasa and only concentrate on mm, the philosophy which describes uh, Krishna, um, as the Supreme Personality of God, and the uh, cause of all other causes, then you will also not be able to understand Krishna. So in the 18th century, a Vaishnava took birth in Orissa, and he was given the task to compile more of the pastimes of Krishna, so that the Vaishnavas in this world, while chanting the holy name, can absorb their mind in, in uh, Hari, in Krishna, and in Rama, and, uh, and make relationship, uh, Sambandha, with the, uh, 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 the divine couple. This Vaishnava later became known as uh, Siddha Krishna Das, um, who lived at Govardhan. Mm -hmm. His father died at an early age, and his 
mother uh, uh, who wanted to follow her husband uh, gave uh, some a last instruction to her little boy. She had put the funeral pyre up, the body of her husband uh, was lying there, and uh, she said, uh, soon your mother has also joined your father in the uh, other world. You must go to Brindavan somehow or other uh, and uh, render service to Radha and Krishna. Uh, uh, throughout the day and the night uh, there. And saying this, the mother of this saint uh, went up to the funeral pyre. Uh, no, no, first she put fire to the funeral pyre and then she climbed up uh, uh, to join her husband. So the little boy was lost now. Mother and father at a young age uh, and uh, he only had one instruction. He should go to Vrindavan uh, and render service to Radha and Krishna there in his mind. And this is what he uh, did. Uh, he stayed in Vrindavan and he chanted and uh, he uh, knew the process of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the full process. He remembered Krishna and Slow and one day Radharani appeared to him and said to him, I want you to write uh, a guide based on the Bhagavatam and the later scriptures of the Goswamis uh, through which devotees can combine uh, the chanting with the remembrance of Krishna. And then Sita Krishna does. Uh, 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 yet now he was a Siddha now. A Siddha means a perfected being because he had already the darshan of Radharani uh, and uh, he compiled this work uh, uh, Bhavana Sala Sangraha it is a work where he takes the Bhagavatam verses and the later works of the uh, six Goswamis and uh, writes a perfect uh, collection um, of meditations on Radha and Krishna. I, I want to um, uh, uh, talk to you about um, uh, one incident in Krishna Das' uh, life, he he had been uh, uh, chanting, um, and uh, while he was chanting, he visualized the pastimes, the holy pastimes. Uh, <laughs> you all know the holy pastimes. Uh, uh, this pastime is uh, arranged by the uh, so that Krishna would bow down to Radharani, and in the battle of uh, love, where they throw colors at each other, accept defeat from Radha and uh, and, and bow down to her lotus feet. Uh, so. Uh, Siddha uh, Krishna Das was meditating about this Leela mm -hmm. and he uh, inside his meditation helped Srimati Radharani to throw colors at Krishna. Uh, you know, there are various there are flower there, there are balls uh, from flower petals which are <laughs> Uh, moved into uh, put into the colorful liquid <laughs> vermilion colored for instance a, a pot with, with that liquid and then they become dripping wet and Radharani once threw such a, a flower ball 
in the holy leela at Krishna's chest, and it exploded and sprayed Krishna with these uh, <laughs> beautiful colors. So Radharani needed some help during this time, and uh, 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 Siddha Krishna does in his meditation was reaching and was giving Radha a real that is um, perfume powder. Uh, he gave her some kumkum, -kum, saffron colors to throw because when Krishna's body is all wet from, from Radha's uh, <laughs> flower bowl and from Radha's uh, pouring water, then the powder sticks very nice to his body. So Radha threw some powder there. It is called gulal, the red powder. And uh, uh, was also running to Krishna and smeared him with <laughs> sandalwood paste. So, so Siddha Krishna does. In his meditation was there and participating in this loving battle of colors. Um, um, when the divine couple engages in the holy lila, each color means a particular bhava, a particular loving emotion. Uh, so uh, they don't just throw colors at each other, they are uh, covering each other with their love uh, for, <laughs> for each other. So. And it's very humorous. They, they uh, say many jokes. Uh, um, for instance, uh, once uh, Krishna took color and put it so much in the eyes of Radha that Radha Saki screamed out and said, this is unfair. You have broken the rules. The eyes of Radha are now full with color. Uh, you must be punished. So then um, Devi becomes the, the judge and says, well, because um, uh, you have broken the rules and put the, the powder right in the eyes and you have paid, painted Radharani, uh, you, sorry, you have uh, paint, given pain to Radha. She now uh, should uh, smear you with black kajal. So Radha uh, looks at Sudevi mm, and Sudevi brings her little lota uh, with kajal, this black paste. And uh, then Radha takes uh, the lota with a black eyeliner, eye, eye paste, mm, and goes to, to Krishna. And, Krishna just looks at her, overwhelmed by the beauty of Shimati Radharani. Then Radha cannot avoid trembling with so much love. She takes her fingers and takes the, the neck of Krishna so that he cannot move away. And then wants to put this black eyeliner around Krishna's eyes. It's usually what ladies wear. But she is trembling so much that the blackness of the color goes all over Krishna's face and and so on. And all the sakis they take their sticks and pound it to the ground and shout ho ho hori ho ho hori. And Krishna cannot do anything because he is uh, stultified in looking at Krishna. At Radha. So, so Krishna does in his meditation saw all this, and in his meditation he was, um, it's called uh, uh, in his uh, uh, meditational body or spiritual body, it's called Bhava Deha or Siddha Deha. He helped Shimati Radharani by supplying everything which she required for this pastime. Now when he ended his meditation and, and came out of the meditation, 
uh, there were people around him looking at him and because his body his uh, renunciant body and clothes they were all covered with pink color red color black eyeliner um, and he smelled very fragrant imagine you would look at ananda vadan maharaj and he, his beautiful dhoti uh, and uttariya would be covered with green color with red color uh, with yellow color and his face would be all black with kajal uh, you would think oh maharaj what happened to you where, where were you <laughs> so so when the vaishna uh, but when his uh, when he would smell very nicely also we would th think wow so much perfume is on on you uh, maharaj what what to explain <laughs> so so when uh, when the devotees gathered around sita krishna das baba they um, they saw there he was colored from top to, uh, uh, to, to, to feet um, with, with colors and fragrant substances. This, uh, I'm telling you this because this shows you how real the meditation on Radha and Krishna uh, is. Uh, there is a purpose in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita where Prabhupada explains when you serve Radha Krishna uh, with your hands like you do the deity worship and you dress the deities or you do any service for Radha and Krishna with the hand that is very real but also when you serve Radha and Krishna by remembering them that is also the same real because if you serve Krishna with gross matter that is the body made of earth water fire etc or if you serve Krishna with subtle matter that is mind inner ego mind intelligence uh, and so chitta also that is the same you're serving Radha and Krishna. So especially those who want to come out of the shadow chanting, where their chanting is very mechanically, uh, where it is just sound, um, but not the complete sound. Uh, <laughs> they need to know how to uh, think of Radha and Krishna. Mm. So, I will, uh, this is uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati statement. He says, no, let's start with Bhakti no Thakur. He says, it's shadow chanting. If you don't chant in a relationship with Radha and Krishna, you're not uh, uh, mindful of this. And... Um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says it's not completely the holy name when you only are intoning the sound and uh, you don't remember uh, Radha and Krishna. He says, Harikata um, is the Swarup Shakti of Krishna. So I want to now um, go to the work of uh, this great exalted saint who gave us a guideline of meditation. If you want to start uh, to, um, this process of Nam Smaranam, uh, um, where you remember the holy name, but where you also... <coughs> Sorry! <laughs> where you also... <laughs> Remember Radha Krishna, the best work is to start with the Bhajan Rahasya that is written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. 
and there you will find a wonderful guideline uh, according to the Shikshastakam verses and uh, philosophy, philosophy that is uh, other ver verses collected from the scriptures. That is, you will find the tattva there, but you will also find lila uh, uh, there. Uh, that is uh, what gives you rasa, and in this way, then name is com uh, complete. It's a wonderful work. It is wonderful to be read and. Uh, Krishna does, uh, as his composition is also there, if you want to know, well, what, what is Krishna doing now at this time? Uh, how, how is he engaging in his divine pastimes? Now, I want to read uh, to you from his work, uh, from a period of the time when most of the devotees start the chanting around this time, uh, uh, 424. Uh, uh, usually, we are still doing Mangala Artic at this, uh, to 536 is the time when uh, a parrot, uh, uh, a parrot, the parrot of Shimati Radharani. She is a sharika, a female parrot. Te says to uh, Krishna, mm, mm, uh, Oh Krishna, uh, Radharani's mother and Lord Yatila uh, have all this suspicion about Radha. And uh, Abhimanyu whose name translates as always angry, <laughs> is always speaking roughly about uh, Radharani. They are always finding uh, fault, uh, these two. And uh, now, soon the morning the sun will rise, and they will see that Radha is not in her house. And they will immediately sus suspect that Sh Shimati Radharani is with you. you. See, there are three meeting places in Vindavan. Uh, in the night time, the meeting of Radha and Krishna takes place in, in, uh, in Vindavan town uh, or in, in Vindavan proper. In, in the eternal pastime, uh, this, uh, there is a place called Yoga Pit, where the uh, Radha and Krishna meet. And it is surrounded by the, uh, on three sides by the Yamuna, and then there is a channel on the fourth side. So uh, you can, uh, uh, Yamuna Ji is protecting the area, and it is there where the divine couple meet in the night. This is where this, this pastime is, uh, is happening. Uh, so this parrot says, uh, soon the morning sun will come, and it is uh, very dangerous if Radha is not at home. Uh, they will suspect that Radha is with Krishna. So, so Radha is at that time with Krishna, she was meeting Krishna in the night in this uh, yoga pit, and uh, they spent the whole night together um, uh, in their loving pastimes. And yes, uh, uh, they must now uh, separate, they must part their ways. Uh, Krishna must return to Nandagram, and uh, Radharani must return to either Yavat, where Yatila stays uh, with her uh, son Abhimanyu or to Vashana. Uh, that, that is where, uh, where, the, where she must return so that she is found lying in her bed, sleeping, and everyone will think she was the whole night in, in her bed. Uh, 
Uh, so when the parrot talks like this, mm, 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 and Radharani hears her parrot talking about Jatila and Abhimanyu and their constant suspicions, her heart is, is churned uh, and uh, very sad. She rises from the bed, uh, which is uh, made, covered with, with flowers. These flowers are now everywhere. <laughs> oh. uh, well, it's like this. There, there are flowers and then there's a fine sheet of cloth on the flowers. And then on the cloth, uh, the divine couple is is there. Uh, so uh, the heart of Radha and Krishna was beating very strongly. Um, and uh, then uh, uh, Radha and Krishna start to, to leave the Kunja um, in the yoga pit where they spent the night together. You must know whenever Radha Rani walks through the forest of Vindavan, she walks in procession. Before her, there is Brinda Devi, the deity of Vindavan's forest, who leads the procession. Come this way, come this way, and so on. And then come two Sakis after Brinda Devi, and then comes, come four Sakis, uh, and in the middle of these four Sakis, uh, Shimati Radharani uh, uh, is, is walking. Now all these sakis, and, and then behind them are uh, the, the servants of Radharani, the small little servants. They are very small in size. They are also very young in age. They are called manjaris. And they all carry something. Um, one core carries a go golden pitcher with water. Another carries a polished mirror where Shimati Radharani can see herself when she is decorated. Everything is all right. And uh, still another has this cage. <laughs> There, there is this female parrot, she's called the Sharika, uh, uh, who, who had uh, spoken earlier that now is the time to leave the Kunja and quickly go home to, uh, and, and Radha and Krishna had, had followed the instructions. Now, mm, mm, there are many descriptions how uh, Radha leaves with a sad expression the kunja and how um, one little manjari turns back because uh, Radha has, unfo has forgotten uh, uh, something uh, uh, and, and uh, a belt or, or a ring. Uh, and and they bring everything to 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 Shimati Radharani, uh, but all of a sudden, as the mm, uh, sakis uh, uh, look at Radha and Krishna, they begin to laugh <laughs> because Krishna is has dressed himself with the blue clothes of Radha, uh, it's the finishing clothes. It's, it's called an anshali. You know, when a woman is fully dressed, then at the end, a thin little cloth is wrapped around her upper body. That's an anshali. And it, it is very fine. And uh, Krishna now wears Radha's cloth. And uh, the Sakis also look at Radha and she wears Krishna's Pitambara. It's a, like a scarf which Krishna 
puts on his transcendent body and they laugh because uh, the divine couple wears each other's cloth and the sadaka in this world will wonder why, why, I mean, they are Radha and Krishna, they do not know their own cloth. <laughs> but it is like this, Radha Krishna has a, 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 a blackish blue effulgence from his body. So he thinks by mistake, the, the mistake of love, that when he dresses in this blue cloth, uh, then, then that's, that's his effulgence. And similarly, Radharani thinks when she is dressed in the yellow cloth, that that is her effulgence and everything is paka, everything is first class. But the sakis, uh, the, the gopis who are around them, see this is a mistake. <laughs> There is an analogy. When you pour white milk into a white conch shell, you cannot distinguish the milk from the conch shell. So in the same way, Krishna could not distinguish the blue cloth of Radha from his effulgence. And so could Radha uh, not uh, distinguish the yellow cloth from 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 her own yellow uh, or golden effulgence. So so then Lalita begins to speak. Oh, she says, this is not good. We should uh, curse Aruni. Because Aruni uh, has risen. Who is Aruni? Aruni is, you know, the red color in the morning, which you see in the horizon. You do not yet see the sun, but you see this red crimson color in the, in the eastern sky. I think uh, you can see in Lithuania, very beautiful because it's close to the closer up north, very beautiful. So this is this color which you see is Aruni, who is the charioteer, the chariot driver of the sun. And so the chariot driver gets up first and then his master gets up second. So f first comes Aruni, the, the, the reddish uh, cloth and uh, reddish uh, color, and then comes uh, um, uh, the sun only. Mm. Uh, so uh, Lalita uh, is, is having in her mind, uh, I curse this color because now the divine couple has to be uh, separated. You must know that in Vedic scriptures, it is considered to be an offense to disturb a loving couple. No? Do you remember in the Mahabharata, uh, when um, once Pandu was uh, hunting and he saw that uh, uh, a female deer and a male deer were engaged in a romantic meeting. And he shot at that time his arrow. So these deers turned into their real form. Uh, one, they were both sadhus who lived in the forest and who wanted to experience the pleasures of romantic love, but they couldn't do it in their human form because they were ascetics. Uh, so they took on by their powers, the form of animals uh, uh, and uh, uh, deers and coupled together. So because uh, Pandu had disturbed the loving romantic meeting, 
uh, uh, the sadhus cursed him because it's it's known uh, uh, love uh, even you know we are brahmacharis we have nothing to do with this uh, but uh, a loving couple should not be disturbed when they are together and therefore um, aruni who rises in the morning each morning he does wrong he disturbs loving couples. This is what Lalita says. So Radharani, uh, eyes are reddened with anger because she is interrupted in her uh, loving meeting with Krishna. Mm. He, uh, she says, even though Aruni has lost his legs, he returns again and again in uh, destroying the pastimes of the uh, uh, of the loving uh, uh, couple, you must know this is expressed in in poesy. There is a whole 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 uh, world behind this. Uh, what is behind this is uh, that. Uh, Aruni, the chariot driver of uh, Surya, the sun, uh, has no legs. And the reason is that he is cursed with white leprosy. Uh, and uh, due to this illness, his legs have melted away. They have gone. He, has no, he can only drive the chariot, but he has no legs. Uh, this is, in poesy it is expressed, this is because he was cursed to lose his legs by contracting white leprosy because of this repeated sin. To, to, to in the morning rise first <laughs> and uh, uh, then um, being cursed for his sinful deed to destroy the loving couples who now have to separate because it's morning time. So Krishna is hearing Radha speak like this, but these very poetic words, uh, uh, Radha's words are there. Even though Aruni has lost his legs, this sinful person returns in a moment to repeat his sinful deed and again disturb loving uh, and and, and, uh, and uh, Krishna is becoming very happy to hear this talk of the uh, Sakis uh, and so on. And uh, then uh, uh, the book describes a little bit about the nature of Vrindavan life. Everyone in Vrindavan is living only for the service of Krishna. And uh, for the service of Krishna, they give up their, their normal dharma. Uh, for women, for instance, they have the married women, they have the stri dharma. They are uh, feeding their uh, children, they are boiling milk on the stoves. And they do all kinds of household duties. But the moment Krishna's flute is uh, heard by them, they leave all this. They leave their children. They leave the milk boiling on the stove. And they, and they run. The gopis run to meet Krishna. The, the cows naturally eat grass. That's their cow dharma. <laughs> But when they uh, uh, see Krishna, the grass, or when they hear Krishna's flute, the grass falls out of their mouth. And even the calves who are drinking the milk from the udders of the cows are stopping to milk. Um, the dharma of the river is to flow in one direction. But when Krishna's flute sounds, it goes in the opposite direction. Everyone and everything in Vrindavan is only existing for the pleasure of Krishna. 
So uh, some examples are given in the scripture so that the Saraka in this world can understand the loving pastimes of Radha and Krishna appear to be romantic pastimes where, uh, um, you know, there is uh, enjoyment uh, of, of males and then females. But here in Vindavan, it is sheer service. Service that is done to the extent that everyone forgets his own selfish interest. Uh, and for instance, Radha and Krishna walk on the bank of the Yamuna, and there is a swan, a female swan, who has just gotten from her husband uh, something to, to eat, the lotus, from the lotus flower. But uh, she, she doesn't eat the food any longer. She drops the food and just looks at Radha and Krishna. Everything uh, it turns around uh, in Vindavan for the pleasure of Krishna. Even the seasons. Do you know seasons? Some, uh, there are six seasons in Vindavan. We only know four seasons, but two extra seasons are added in Vindavan. Um, they serve Krishna. When Krishna gets up in the morning, uh, uh, at that time, there is a particular season uh, active, uh, which gives a, mm, it, it's springtime. In springtime, it's easier to get up. It's easier to even not sleep at all in springtime. Uh, because when we are, it's very enlivening in springtime. Then Krishna takes his bath after he has gotten up and uh, the water may be a little cool. So when, after Krishna, when Krishna takes his bath, it becomes hot summer. So when Krishna takes the cool wa water and there is hot summer all around, it's very refreshing for Krishna. He likes it very much. Uh, when Krishna grazes the cows, he will now leave Vindavan forest and go out. Sorry, he will leave Nandagram or, yes, he will leave Nandagram. At the time, normally it's very hot, but the season, the rainy season will come and sprinkle nice mist, nice, uh, nice, uh, how do you say, <laughs> uh, refreshing, small drops of water. Uh, then, in the, then comes noontime and Krishna takes his supper, uh, no, his, his not supper, his, his uh, noon meal. Then it becomes cold because you have more hunger when it's cold. No? That is when it's very nice and cold, Krishna can eat. And then again, when he mm, returns, on Nandagram, the autumn season comes. In autumn season, it's very nice to return to, to the home. Um, so the autumn season serves Krishna uh, like this. And when Krishna finally, uh, after taking his dinner, goes to the bed, then a very, very cold winter season serves him because it's so nice to sleep in the cold uh, winter when there is a thick blanket covering Krishna. So in this way, everything, the animals, uh, also the seasons, everyone serves Krishna. And when we hear about this, Nam Smaram service, this uh, chanting the holy name and thinking of Krishna. That is very, very, that is service. That is not for our mental enjoyment, not for our entertainment. It is meant to do service. How can a devotee learn to mm, do these, uh, to chant the holy name and do Smaram? 
I would first of all uh, recommend the step of, uh, these are steps which Bhakti Vinotago has given. You chant before the deities. I have seen uh, pictures of the beautiful deities uh, uh, in, in your ashram, in their various beautiful outfits. So it is good to chant the rounds uh, by looking at the deities, no? and remembering Krishna's form or seeing his form. As you will do this, the um, type of chanting, it is good to very carefully start to remember Krishna's kindness, for instance, how he so, so mercifully greeted the soul who returned from the material world. You know, the, the Gop Kumar, when he returned, he was greeted by Krishna. Krishna was saying, where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Um, I was constantly looking down the path to see if maybe today you would come or tomorrow but you did not show any interest. You even did not take my name while you were in the material world. If you would have taken my name, I would perhaps had a reason to take you, but you showed no interest. But now, finally, you, uh, you have come and you have made my life successful. So the devotee remembers the kindness of Krishna, the compassion of Krishna. And, uh, and uh, 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 the form, the qualities, and then the pastimes. But in order to come to this uh, natural state of um, remembrance, you must be, you must hear about Krishna. Otherwise, you have nothing to remember. Mm. We are so much covered with avidya at the moment that uh, on our own, without the help of the Shastra, sadhu and shastra, we cannot remember anything. We are like patients who suffer from amnesia, you know, when, when, they, they, when people have an accident in the, on the road. Uh, and after the accident, parts of the brain can be damaged and they, for, for some time, cannot remember anything. So we are also like this. Uh, in order to enter the, carefully into the realm of Smaranam, it is very important if we hear from the doctor, the sadhus, and we read from the medical, medicinal books, the Shastras, to, so that we can wake up. Therefore, in the Harinam Ashram, we, uh, it is very important, and I think you, you do this, to regularly study the Bhagavatam and to study the books of the Goswamis who are practice, practicing Krishna consciousness on the basis of the Bhagavatam. And they usually uh, combine these two things. Uh, that is uh, the chanting of the holy name um, in Kirtan or in Japa, you know, uh, and the remembrance of, of Krishna in his various pastimes. That is full Krishna consciousness. <laughs> that is full sadhana. That is full practice. Um, it's a, one has to enter this. Uh, path of Smaranam very carefully because there is a danger that uh, your Smaranam keeps you in the material world if it is not done properly with the knowledge of Tattva and Rasa. Um, uh, because when you think of Krishna uh, without knowing and hearing and remembering uh, at times, not always, at times, uh, who he is, then you will think him to be an ordinary person and the pastimes with Radha and the gopis, ordinary romantic affairs. And that, that type of thinking 
uh, is very dangerous. It will keep you in the material world bound very strictly by the laws of nature. Mm. So the uh, smaranam or the remembrance of Krishna must be done properly with proper understanding uh, so that you can become very, uh, let me say, uh, very uh, purified in your heart and uh, relish the holy name. I was yesterday listening to part of a, a lecture from one nice devotee in America, Jai Jagannath is his name. He gives every morning a very, very, very researched Bhagavatam class and he talked very nicely about um, uh, the question, why does Krishna have so many holy names? You know, and he quoted the verse Nam Nam Akari Bahuda. Krishna has so many holy names because people in this world have various desires, positions, and therefore some of Krishna's names will appeal to them more. And because all these names are mm, related to certain pastimes, you know, uh, Syam Sunda, the beautiful Lord Syama, who's like a blackish rain cloud, mm, is one name. The devotee will take this name and think, uh, yes, the rain cloud gives relief from the the heat of the summer, so the same way Syama Sunda gives relief from the tapa triya, the, th the burning of the threefold miseries, if I remember him. But another person will uh, like to remember Krishna as Mulidhara, the holder of the flute, because he knows with the flute Krishna is calling. Come, 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 whoever you are, come. <laughs> the flute uh, sound uh, attracts souls to Krishna. So he might like to think in this direction. Uh, we have the name Krishna. We like uh, Krishna because all the other names are in, in this one name. <laughs> Therefore, this name is so much there. The, uh, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, mm. because Krishna attracts, uh, and through everything he does, he just attracts. <laughs> yeah, so I was very happy to be here uh, with you. Uh, I want to give a summary. Mm. The process of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to take Harinam and to remember Krishna. This is the particular, uh, let us say, um, gift of the Gaudiya Sampradaya, because there is an, um, there we have the Bhagavatam who tells us who is Krishna, and there we have the many works of the Goswamis who tell us not only who is Krishna, but how we can attain him. For instance, this work Manak Shiksha is giving us very solid instructions about of Smaranam, of remembering Krishna, and, and so on. So we are um, trying to learn this, but, but the, I always like to go to the principle. I so often see, so often see in Krishna consciousness. Uh, uh, that uh, um, if the principle is not understood, then mistakes are made in the detail. And the principle is to think of Krishna and never forget him. <laughs> All the rules and regulations uh, come after this. They serve this, uh, this principle. And uh, somehow or other, we have to start our remembrance of Krishna with the help of uh, uh, the uh, sadhus and the help of uh, the scriptures. And uh, all the Goswamis will always refer back to the Bhagavatam. Therefore, 
A good shenta should become a good student of the Shema Bhagavatam. That's the, the root from where every other thing uh, comes because the Bhagavatam knows how to combine tattva and rasa in exactly the right way. Uh, being spoken by Shukadev Goswami and the various other realized souls who speak in the Bhagavatam. It is the uh, king of all scriptures. And if you uh, are putting your mind into the Bhagavatam and chanting, everything else will come naturally. My dear devotees, don't worry. Not all of us, uh, 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 including myself, are practiced uh, deeply practiced in the art of chanting and remembering Krishna. And we might think, oh, oh, how will I learn all this? This is so much detail and so on. But uh, you will learn everything just very naturally as you take the holy name and take the Bhagavatam. Everything will come naturally. It's, it's almost like... Hmm, when you are very hungry, you may be fe feeling a lot of anxiety. How will I become satisfied? How will I become content? It's not possible for me. But uh, if you take bit by bit uh, food, then very after some short time, you will feel, ah, oh, I'm free from hunger now. <laughs> In much the same way, my dear devotees, it is when you take the teachings of uh, the Bhagavatam, uh, uh, um, when you take the holy name and the Bhagavatam, in a natural way, you, you will learn everything. and You will be coming content. Uh, it is not something that you need to uh, become anxious. Oh my God, I have to learn so much. I have to do so much. This is not correct. This is not spirit to life. This is... Uh, the jnana maga, <laughs> this is not bhakti maga. In bhakti, you, everything is very simple. If you just uh, keep to the principles, that is, um, uh, hearing about Krishna, chanting about Krishna, and then remembering Krishna. It will happen naturally, step by step, if you keep this, this process. Uh, life. There, there's nothing you need to, oh, to. How can I learn all this? Oh, oh I must maybe run away to Radha Kund, or I must run away to this or that place to learn from people. Now, then you are in the wrong, wrong idea, as if everything is dependent of you. You know, when you chant and read the Bhagavatam from inside. You will be guided and you will uh, get to know everything. Mouthful by mouthful by mouthful. <laughs> uh, let me say, let me think. Oh, um, you know, that's the problem when one doesn't sleep. Mm properly, then one forgets his verses. I am dividing the that I as yet. No, that's, that's not. Bhakti parishanu bhavo virakti anyatra shaisa. Bhakti, uh, a direct experience of Krishna and the loss of taste for the material world will happen naturally uh, uh, in the process of bhakti. It will develop as natural as uh, when you eat, you become nourished and happy and uh, after some time free from hunger. My dear devotees, I want to end here my class. I'm very, 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 I'm a fan of your ashram. Thank you, uh, uh, Ananda Varan Maharaj for your uh, uh, kind invitation. And I uh, remember the first time I was there, uh, this ashram did not look, uh, the, the temple room did not look like it 
looks now? Is it in the same house or is it in a different house? Uh, that house was burned out completely. Ah. Two years ago. Completely was burned out. Temple was burned out previously. Two years ago. It's a completely new house. Acha, cha, 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 cha. I can see. I can see. Wonderful. I wish you all the best. Uh, my dear devotees, I am in a little dilemma. I have uh, a lot of things to do still today. Mm, my time is there. I think our program is covered. I think everything was very clearly addressed. So we don't need to ask question can we can we <laughs> is it all right ananda Vadan, maharaj yes maharaj as you wish we can would you? like to thank you very much for your katha and i hope we don't need to curse brahma what he did not gave us Karna Ar, Ar, Arbuda, Arbuda Ves Srihat, millions of years to hear your Katha. <laughs> I thank you. I think, it was, it's my, I think you could see, I very much uh, like to talk about these subjects. My dear devotees, I would be so happy if you could take the computer and just give me the darshan of the deities, if you can take the computer very close to the deities. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can also please come. Uh, yes, so this will be very nice if I can see the date the deities. Ah. ah. Oh, this small deity, please explain. This is Gaurinitai, Nartana Prinitai, Natavara Gaura. Natavara Gaura Nitai, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And next, Radha Govinda. Wow, wow, beautiful. Radha Govinda. Thank you so much for this darshan. Wow, Radha Rani has a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful. This forest, forest flowers. Forest flowers. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. She rather than is dressed in a bluish garment here. <laughs> <laughs> but in the Kata, the upper part of her, the, the, that would be on Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna's Pitambara, that will be on Radha. <laughs> yeah, they, this time Manja, Manjari was helping. Acha, acha. Good, 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 good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I thank you very, very much. Um, well, this is very difficult to go now from, from the Dashan. <laughs> Good, that is, that is all, all, all right. Please put the complete. Kochi, kochi, dandavat. Thank you, Maharaji. All the best for the ashram. You, this is very important. Haribo. Yes, <laughs> Maharaj.